It's like halfway through 2024, and I don't think that we've talked about the one yet at all this year. Today, we're gonna change that. So do you guys remember Don Hankey? He's that multi-billionaire lender guy who loaned Niall Niami around $100 million to build one of the biggest and most expensive houses in the world. Well, Don got a bit burned on that deal. Not too bad, he made most of his money back, but the one definitely did not scare him away from writing big loans. Don Hankey just coughed up a $175 million appeal bond for former president Donald Trump. It was a last minute lifeline for Donald Trump, near a deadline to secure a near half billion dollar bond. Well, as I say, I have a lot of cash, but I would also like to be able to use some of my cash to get elected. New York Attorney General Letitia James was preparing to collect if Trump couldn't pay and to possibly see some of his high profile properties, which Trump called his babies on social media. I'm going to be honest, guys, I don't even fully understand what an appeal bond is. But in today's episode, we're going to figure that out and we're going to dig into exactly why Don Hankey needed to give Donald Trump $175 million. Now, bailing Trump out with a loan of this size is sure to get you some heat. Like this news is making major headlines for that reason alone. But Don Hankey was already a bit of a controversial figure before this started. Don made his fortune initially by selling subprime auto loans to people who wanted to buy cars but had bad credit. Subprime loans tend to get a bad rap, mainly because of their ties to how they helped contribute to the financial crisis in 2008. Basically how these loans work is, let's say that you've got someone who needs to borrow 10,000 bucks to buy a used car, but this borrower doesn't exactly have the best credit. Maybe they've got collections on their report or maybe they have a bankruptcy. Either way, they're not exactly the best candidate for a regular auto loan. Well, in a situation like this, someone like Don Hankey would come in and say, look, since you have bad credit, you're more likely to default on your loan. So I'll give you the 10 grand to buy that car, but I'm going to charge you a crazy high interest rate just to protect myself. On one hand, I guess these loans are kind of good because they're still giving that borrower the opportunity to borrow money. But a lot of people look at subprime loans as a way of preying on less fortunate people, especially because some of these loans have interest rates as high as 30%. Yikes. Anyways, Don Hankey made a mint writing subprime auto loans back in the day. He started in 1978 when he founded his company Westlake Financial, and by 1982 is when he started another company called Hankey Capital. This was a separate branch that focused more on real estate investments. So yeah, loans have always kind of been Don's thing, it's starting to make a little bit more sense why he wrote this big loan to Trump. There are a lot of different ways to make money if you're somebody like Don Hankey. In the case of auto loans, you can lend out 10,000 bucks like we said earlier and charge 20% interest, which means you'd be collecting a payment of like $167 per month in interest alone. That's a great return on your money. And if your customer ever defaults on the loan, you just repossess the car and sell it at auction. Then you repeat the process. When it comes to lending on real estate though, it gets a bit trickier, but pretty much the same concept. For a lot of development loans, how this works is you've got someone like Don who doesn't always have the money themselves. So what they do is they borrow millions of dollars from outside private investors. He'll promise all of those investors a return on their money, let's say seven or eight percent. Then he takes that money and he goes and lends it out to other real estate developers at a rate of 10 to 12 percent, and he just collects the difference. So if a lender like this is borrowing money at eight percent, and then lending it back out at 12%, he's making a 4% spread just for being the middleman. And 4% might not sound like a lot, but when you're lending out big money, this means big profits. Like going back to the case of the one where Don lent Niall Niami around $100 million to build this house, Don's personal interest on that loan would have been around $4 million per year. Not bad, especially considering that the one took like 10 years to complete. Now I've got some familiarity with how loans work. I mean, I was a mortgage banker for like 15 years, but this Trump loan is a little bit confusing even for me. The backstory on why Trump ended up needing to come up with so much money to begin with started back when a New York judge decided that Trump was liable for conspiring to manipulate his net worth. He owes nearly half a billion dollars to the state of New York for making false declarations about his assets. 
The auto finds Trump and his businesses liable for overstating their assets to get more favorable loan terms. So you guys know how it goes. You honestly don't ever know what to believe with anything you're reading on the internet, but especially when it comes to stuff that's written about Trump. But this graph gives us a little bit of a visual of what they say was happening. So this graph goes from 2011 all the way through to 2021. The blue line shows us what Trump's supposed actual net worth was, and then the red line shows us what he inflated his net worth to. So like for example, in 2014, they're saying his actual net worth was only 2.3 billion, but he said that it was 5.8 billion. Or in 2017, his actual net worth was 2.4 billion, but he said it was 5.9 billion. You guys see where I'm going with this. Every year what they're claiming is that he inflated his net worth by somewhere around three and half billion dollars on average. The problem with inflating your net worth is that it could technically lead to other financial gains. Like let's just say that I wanted to inflate my net worth to $1 billion. I don't know who would believe that, but if I did do that, then in theory, I would be able to go out and get a bunch of really favorable loans. Like I would be able to get better loan terms, better interest rates on those loans, stuff like that. But I will say that here's where I'm a little bit confused. So remember, I spent 15 years as a mortgage banker for one of the biggest banks in the world, like me and my team wrote literally thousands of loans over the course of my career. Our borrowers were never allowed to just inflate their net worth. Like it literally was not possible. If you applied for a mortgage, you were gonna go through this super intense underwriting process. We're gonna look at your credit report, your tax returns, your bank statements. We're getting appraisals done. It's not like you could just walk into the bank and declare your net worth to be whatever you wanted it to be. But regardless of my experience, this is what they say that Trump did. And a New York judge imposed a $454 million judgment as a penalty for doing that. At the time, this was a really big deal. I mean, it's still a pretty big deal. There's a lot of people talking about it, but in the beginning, it looked like this potentially could send Trump's entire real estate empire crumbling down. If I have to spend 500 million on a bond, I wouldn't have that option. I'd have to start selling things. Trump, of course, appealed this ruling. In other words, he fought back saying that he did not overinflate his assets. And he also made a point to say that that $454 million ask was kind of insane. My understanding of how this works is that Trump or somebody will need to come up with that $454 million, but they will get that money back if Trump wins the appeal. There was a serious sense of urgency though, because if he didn't produce the cash needed in order to satisfy the judgment right away, they could start seizing his assets. If he wants to keep the state from collecting on this enormous amount of money by seizing property or assets, he has to post this bond. If he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek, uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court. And we will ask the judge to seize his assets. As with most guys like this, Trump may be worth billions of dollars, but he doesn't exactly have $454 million just lying around ready to be seized. Most of his net worth is tied up in physical assets, particularly property like the Trump Tower, which is worth a couple hundred million dollars. There's the 40 Wall Street building that he owns. This one's supposed to be valued at over 200 million. He's got the Trump National Golf Club. There's around 40 million or so of value there. And of course there's Mar-a-Lago, I'll let you guys debate down in the comments how much that one's worth. The somewhat good news for somebody like Trump or anybody who finds themselves in this situation is he doesn't necessarily need to personally come up with this money to pay the judgment. There's actually insurance companies that you can go to when you're stuck in this scenario. They're called surety companies and these surety companies will put up the bond money on your behalf. Their role is to provide a line of credit to guarantee the payment of a claim. The issue for Trump though is apparently he went to over 30 different surety companies to try to get this $450 million bond paid and nobody was interested. His lawyer said Trump is facing insurmountable difficulties. He lacks enough cash to obtain a bond so big, and more than 30 insurance companies refuse to accept his real estate as collateral. Trump asked a court to either waive the requirement for a bond while he appeals, or allow him to post something smaller, 
saying a $464 million bond is a practical impossibility. I read a bunch of articles to try to piece this all together, and this is still a bit outside of my wheelhouse, but I'm gonna try to sum up what I think is going on here. So Trump gets ordered to pay this $454 million judgment. Then he goes to these 30 different surety companies, and he basically says, hey everybody, I need your help. I need somebody to cover my bond. Every one of these companies comes back to Trump and they start saying, nope, I'm not gonna help you out unless you show us that you have a bunch of money liquid. I read that most of these companies wanted to see that he had at least a billion dollars in the bank, which he didn't. Trump goes back to all of them and says, come on guys, I know I don't have the money in the bank, but look, I own all of this real estate. Can't you use that as collateral? They reply back and they say, no, we can't use the real estate. Real estate is not considered a liquid asset. We need you to show us that you have cash. Trump then goes back to the court. He pleads his case. He tells them everything that just went down and the court says, okay, fine. We're going to knock that fee down from 454 million down to 175 million. That's a huge discount and definitely a win for Trump, but there is a catch. He only has 10 days to come up with the cash. Donald Trump is breathing a sigh of relief today. That massive $464 million bond was slashed to $175 million, and he's been given an extra 10 days to come up with it. Here we go again. He continues to defy gravity and catches another lucky break. A relieved Trump welcomed the news, calling it a good day. It's a lot of money still. We'll put up the cash or bond very quickly, securities cash or bond, whatever it is, we'll put it up very quickly. At this point, Trump and his team are still scrambling. They go back to some of these other surety companies and those companies still don't want to help him out. But here is where the big shot Don Hankey swoops in to save the day. Apparently, another one of the companies that Hankey owns is this one right here called Knight Insurance Group. Their homepage doesn't tell us exactly what they do. It says that they're a provider of capital support and underwriting capability for niche property and casualty insurance programs. The About Us page tells us that these guys have been around since the 18. Hundreds. I didn't even know that we needed insurance way back then, but they're still around today. I'm assuming that Don Hankey acquired them at some point. Then on the products page, it basically says that they're an insurance company who offers all different types of insurance for both people and for businesses. If you scroll down here, you see there's regular auto policies, contractors policies, general liability, property insurance. But right down here at the very bottom right, that's what Trump needed a surety bond. Hanky did tell several news outlets that he never met Trump. He's never even spoken with Trump, although he did say that he voted for him. He tried to make it clear that reaching out to Trump to offer this $175 million surety bond is nothing more than a good business deal for his company. So how this bond works at this point is that since Hanky provided the bond, he's entitled to a fee, which they say typically ranges between one to 2% of the bond amount. So that's a lot of money since we're talking about a one $175 million bond, Trump could be paying as much as $3.5 million on an annual basis just for this bond guarantee from Hankey's company. In a way, this is all just kind of like numbers moving around on a screen though, because what they're saying is that if Trump does win this appeal, he's not gonna owe anybody anything other than he'll probably owe Don Hankey some of that fee. So from Hankey's standpoint, if Trump wins and he doesn't have to pay the big judgment, then the deal worked out well because he just made a big fee for very little work and not a whole lot of risk. Then if Trump doesn't win, this is where he would need to come up with that $175 million. Here, Hanky would be in a little bit more of a risky position, but in reality, this is just where Trump will probably need to sell some of his real estate and then pay that fee himself. When you make such a big financial contribution to a former president, you're gonna be a little bit in the spotlight and Hanky's getting some heat for this now. There's a lot of people who are starting to dig into his past. Being in the lending business, especially the subprime lending business, he's been a part of a lot of different investigations over the years, including with the Department of Justice and the CFPB. Plus several news outlets now uncovered how another one of Hanky's affiliates called Axos has actually lended Trump hundreds of millions of dollars over the years to bail him out on different loan balloons that were coming due on his New York property. 
properties. I do believe Hanky though when he says that this is just business because in his eyes, it's all about the money. He's a loan guy, he's always been a loan guy, and there's a lot of money to be made when you're lending money out like this that doesn't come with a whole lot of risk regardless of the outcome of that appeal. That's a wrap for today's episode, you guys. If you enjoy the video, remember to hit the subscribe button down below. Before you go, I'll see you guys next week.